Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for episode 97. Hope everybody's doing well and staying safe. Uh, thank you for joining me today for the show as I try to educate minds one tailpipe at a time. So these are some of the stories that we'll talk about today. Now, first, as everybody knows, I like to track the EV sales numbers, and the numbers have come out for May. They're always a bit behind. Right now, the global plug-in electric car sales numbers topped around 144,000 and change, almost 145,000 for the second quarter of this year, which is about 23% less than year over year from 2019. So no surprises. Um, right now, after the first uh, five months, of 2020, the total sales are just over 717,000 for plugins, and that's down 14% year over year. Again, no surprises. Now, what is a surprise is that things seem to be turning around. And the lowest, the lower numbers that I predicted a couple shows back may not be as low as I thought they would be. We'll have to wait and see. Right now, it's trending pretty good. Of course, the Model 3 being your top model. Continuing in sales, nobody's really touching Tesla from a, a plug-in perspective, but some other notables, you know, Renault Zoe's having a good year, Nissan Leaf, VW Golf. That's not bad. If you do the math right now, we're, that's end of May. We haven't had June's numbers yet, but even if we extrapolate that June's going to be the same, that would put us at around 840,000 or so, which would put us uh, into a 1.7, 1.8 million unit uh, uh, end of uh, end of 2020. I know that there are some analysts predicting that there actually may be a boom this year for electric vehicles for plug-ins and I really hope there are. Some are saying we will do more than 2.2 and change that we did last year. So wait and see but good to see the numbers still moving along. Story here from the UK about British gas that they've placed uh, the UK's largest commercial order for EVs. They're starting to uh, deploy over a thousand of the Vauxhall of Vivero evans uh, and these are going to be deployed uh, throughout this year um, and these first vehicles will go to engineers who go around to clients and uh, they'll be chosen to to look at targeting areas where it's important to lower emissions and where a van needs replacing and they've committed to electrifying their entire fleet which is uh, about 12,000 vehicles that they have by 2030 so these vans are pretty good they give you there's two versions that they're looking at uh, purchasing one is up to 230 kilometers or 143 miles these are 50 kilowatt hour battery pack vans and there's another version that has up to 330 kilometers or 205 miles WLTP which gives you uh, delivers through a 75 kilowatt hour battery pack so uh, certainly enough range for daily use for companies and I love to see when fleets uh, become electrified now, GM, of course, throughout this year have come out with announcements of EV Day and all the stuff that they're really pushing EVs. EVs, And we we really like to see when the proof is in the pudding. Well, looks like there is uh, and more steps that uh, GM is taking. Their Orion plant, uh, they have a plant in the Detroit area in Michigan. It was actually to go quiet because right now that uh, plant um, produces a combustion engines for the Chevrolet Sonic combustion uh, vehicle. And, of course, they've discontinued that vehicle. So what to do with the plant? Instead of closing it, they're going to electrify it. They're going to retool it and to take uh, take the plant over and start producing, uh, uh, I think it's powertrains, but maybe full units of the Chevrolet Bolt and the upcoming Bolt EUV, whatever, whenever that happens, probably sometime next year, of course, um, because the this plant wasn't scheduled to stop uh producing internal combustion vehicle engines until October of this year. So it looks like once that happens, they'll retool it and get it going for electrified vehicles. Great to see. So I'm glad that GM is continuing on with their electrification plans. And this is uh, another where they're showing us the proofs in the pudding here. Everybody, of course, is anxiously awaiting Rivian with their uh, pickup truck and their SUV, the R1T and the R1S. Um, of course, they're not... We're not going to see any product till next year by the looks of things. COVID has certainly slowed everything down, but they continue to build the business. And what I mean by that is get funding, continue to fund. They're not selling anything, so they need to continue to uh, have all these expenses paid for somewhere and funding is the way to do it. So they've now closed on some new funding, which totals uh, $2.5 billion. That's 
Awesome, awesome. Now, they, remember, they already received $700 million from Amazon, $500 million from Ford, $350 million from Cox Automotive. And in addition, uh, last December, they resulted in getting round funding for, in another, uh, for another $1.3 billion. So that will make it $2.85 billion that they raised last year. Combine that with an additional $2.5 billion in funding for this year. And that should really elevate them to get them to a successful launch point in 2021 for their vehicles. That's what they're anticipating. So all, you know, the CEO is saying all their effort is on getting the launch vehicles, also continuing on with, with development of the of, of future technologies as well. And uh, uh, hopefully this, this will be enough money now to carry them forward. I know a few owners, a few uh, consumers here around the area that have some reservations in, and I'm not hearing anything new from Timelines, but if you do have a reservation in for any of the Rivian products, uh, please drop a comment or send me an email. I'd love to hear from you. But great to see Rivian continue to be healthy financially, especially during these times, and it looks like the future is very, very bright for them. A little bit of news from Jaguar. They're still selling the I-Pace. It's a little, it's down this year, but they're still selling it. Still doing okay. They've made some some small improvements in the 2020 model year of the I-Pace. They've got a new infotainment system um, and a new three-phase or updated three-phase uh, AC home charging as well. Uh, the inter infotainment system is called the uh, PV Pro, um, and it's a uh, very smartphone centric. Uh, look and feel and the way that it operates so it should be much easier for for uh, users to pick up on they've increased their fast homing fast home charging technology or speeds of uh, to 11 kilowatts for ac uh, versus what it was before they've added some new driver assistance technology with a 3d surround camera and clear sight rear view digital mirror uh, a lot of folks are going that way now with those mirrors. Some other bits and bobs, as the Brits would say, and also they've uh, increased the ability for over-the-air uh, updates uh, and the capabilities for that software, including the infotainment, the battery management, which is all important, and charging can be updated remotely and enable uh, the iPace to continue to improve over time, a la Tesla. So I'm glad to see Jaguar has continued on with that, made some tweaks to make the vehicle even better. It's an expensive vehicle, but it is lovely. And if you're interested in looking at one, I would encourage you to do so. Little information about Audi's new Q4 Sportback e-tron, the concept that they've revealed. I talked about it. Uh, of course, it's Audi, Audi's version, excuse me, of the VW ID4 does share of course the same dimensions in the platform as that vehicle i think this one looks much nicer to be honest with you though it's a gorgeous looking vehicle um so you know it basically uh, because audi is part of the vw group they're obviously going to share technologies and all that kind of stuff uh it looks like the uh, q4 sportback e-tron will have an 82 kilowatt hour battery pack um based again on that meb id4 platform that's being manufactured already the id4s are coming out of china they're starting to be produced and of course in europe the manufacturing will happen at the emden plant which uh, just actually started doing some conversions earlier this year towards ev production um, and it looks like this version of the audi and the vw id4 will be made in the same plants so uh, because of the retooling and the restructuring that's happening the conversion there's a bit of a delay in getting these out but uh, that's, you know, delay is the name of the game for 2020, for sure. Uh, so good to see that uh, Audis and VW is moving forward with this. And finally, last story I have for today is some info. Uh, I'm on the mailing list for Lucid, and they sent me some emails regarding uh, some testing that they did, claiming now that the Lucid Air is the world's most efficient or most aero-efficient luxury car. And certainly the proof is in the pudding. That's my mantra that I'm talking about today. In early June, they took one of their a bunch of their cars to North Carolina for some aerodynamic testing in the labs, and they were able to uh, get out of that testing a verified drag coefficient of 0 0.21 and that's pretty thin for a commercial consumer vehicle I may add that that's functional as well not something you have to kind of you know get shoehorned into to get into and uh, you're so low to the ground you can't see anything um, so they're very happy with that and they're touting that because of the aerodynamic efficiency as one of the main reasons contributed to their BMS and everything else that they're already seeing prototype beta testing 
uh, and these vehicles achieving comfortably ranges of 300 miles, sorry, 400 miles or more on public roads at highway speeds. That's quite the claim, 400 miles at highway speeds. That's pretty, pretty strong. That's, you know, that's a long range Model S territory. So that would be great to see if they're able to do that with that uh, low uh, drag coefficient. Uh, beautiful looking car, so we'll have to wait and see what happens. Of course, they're having their reveal event, their full unveil on September 9th of this year, and I certainly will be tuned for that. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thank you very much for taking the time to tune in. Of course, everybody who watches this through YouTube, I appreciate it if you subscribe. Thank you for comments and for liking, all that kind of stuff that you can do on YouTube. It's much, much appreciated. Um, it's uh, always encouraged by the feedback and by a lot of the info that I learn from you folks. I may add that every time I'm reading comments, I always learn something. Thank you for that, of course. Humble thanks to Patreon supporters for helping me financially to keep the show going and to uh, help cover costs that I incur doing that. Thank you. If you're not sure what it is, check out the website and even a dollar a month will help. Um, of course, I want to continue to urge everybody to stay safe, especially to my viewers and a lot of friends that I have in the United States. Um, things aren't settling down as quickly as we'd like to see. And uh, you have the power to make the changes. And I'm probably preaching to the converted here. I know that a lot of people are staying safe, but look at public health guidelines and please conform to that. It's encouraging uh, for everybody to do their part. Um, I will have uh, looking to do a couple of car reviews this summer. So stay tuned for some upcoming shows on some new reviews I've got going. But other than that, looking through my notes, that seems to be it for this edition. Again, I want to thank everybody for taking the time out of their schedules, out of their busy days to watch me and hopefully learn something as I help educate minds one tailpipe at a time here on the EV Revolution Show. So until the next show, please, everybody stay safe and I'll see you when I see you. Take care. Bye-bye.